What's going on everybody? It's Robinson. I know it's been a while. Uh, I gotta get better at just shooting footage on a more regular basis, but I'm very busy and then I mean to shoot things and I don't. But I wanted to give you an update. Uh, my last video was in regards to my second show of the season back on August 25th, OCB Battle of the Belt, uh, Joe Franco's show in Burlington, New Jersey. I kind of decided to do that show um, at the last minute because I had two clients in it as I talked about in my previous um, video. So you know, both my clients did pretty well, um, taking third and fourth respectively in their classes. Um, it was their first time on stage, they just wanted to do one. We, we still have some things to work out with them in terms of posing, uh, bringing in the conditioning a little tighter for one of them, but they had a great time. Um, and the compliment to me is, if I get you to, you know, if you decide to compete and by the end of it you say you want to do it again, that means I did something right. Because uh, competing is not easy. So congrats to both my clients. We didn't come home with any pro cards, but the main thing is they both got themselves in better physical shape than they've ever been. Uh, and they were very happy with the packages they brought. Now they're addicted to the process of getting better. So they will be hitting the stage again sometime in the future. For me, as mentioned, I had some things going on. Um, I'm still debating if I want to put that on YouTube. Um, I did film everything. Um, I have some updates regarding that if I decide to do that series. But I just want to talk about the day of the show. So, um, my biggest problem in all my other contest preps is I was just so focused on coming in dialed in. I never truly got to enjoy show day, the process, winning, losing, or anything in between. I was just focused on prep, 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 prep. And after, you know, I have to say, after the, after running into the May show, um, I felt really, really good. Honestly, I've never done such a short prep in my life. Usually I have to do 20 weeks plus to get stage lean. I think I got stage lean in 18 weeks for the ANBF Pro Show, which if you followed my secret prep series, you know I won into first place as a pro, which was awesome. Um, I don't consider myself to be elite, but I, you know, I went against good competition, very solid competitors, and came out on top. Um, so I felt great after that. Uh, I did an eight week to nine week uh, reverse post that show before deciding to do the August show. So um, in May I came in at 168 pounds. By the time I got to stage uh, in August, I actually came in two pounds lighter at 166 pounds. Now if you follow me on my Facebook page or my Instagram, you know a lot of what already happened and what my conditioning was like and saw pictures and everything else. Uh, and if you wanna follow me more daily to see updates and you know frequent interaction with me those are the places to be youtube is one of these things that i just kind of do on the side when i have time so um i got up probably about i don't know five or six in the morning i'll probably say six uh, added in about 30 40 grams of carbohydrates uh, a little bit of you know continued with my water and my sodium i didn't deplete anything i didn't cut anything uh did a slight pump up I had done the tan and the polygraph the night before, obviously, which I passed. Surprise, because I am natty amongst uh, some speculation of what I am or am not, which I kind of find hysterical, and um, this is a sidebar, that you'll believe the 250-pound guy <laughs> who shredded and jacked is natural, but you'll accuse me, the 166-pound guy of drugs. It's like hysterical. But anyway, um, you know, I... I didn't think about what kind of competition I was going to be going against that day of the show. I didn't worry about it. I wasn't concerned about it. Not because I believed I was going to beat anybody, just because there's no reason to. The work is done at that point. There's no reason to stress myself out. Uh, I've been through this before. I've done it numerous times. So I did my slight carb up pump up, went to the show, went to the competitors meeting, met up with my uh, clients, and proceeded to just get ready for the show in terms of they were on before me. So I was getting them, you know, ready, while at the same time trying to calculate when I was going to start introducing my carbohydrates and my and um, salt and pump and pre-workout and everything else that I usually do backstage. And got to just, honestly, I spent more of my time not worrying about myself at all. What I really did was 
socialize with a lot of the competitors for the first time. Not because I'm antisocial, um, not because I don't, you know, I'm trying to mean mug anybody, not because I'm selfish or, um, you know, wishing harm or for anybody else to fail. We all worked very hard to get there. Um, but I'm usually just very focused on my process and getting myself ready. Um, so I got the, got them ready. Honestly, I couldn't have been happy, any more happy. I peaked them just right. They came in nice and tight. Um, they represented themselves well for the first time. Uh, they enjoyed it. They, they had a little bit of their stage presence that they need to work on in terms of their posing, um, which would have probably got them higher positions had their posing been a little bit better. But as I mentioned, you can pose yourself to first and you can pose yourself to last. Um, and I give them credit because the classes they were in, they were in physique, not classic physique, physique. They were in very large classes and they were on stage for a very long time. And for being their first time, I mean, honestly, they look like they've been there a million times. They held their own, they listened to commands well, they turned, they, they, they hit their poses pretty good. Um, it, it was awesome to watch them. Like, I was ecstatic. I didn't even care about their placing. I was just ecstatic they, that they enjoyed it. Um, and they represented themselves to the best of their ability. When they were off, you know, then when they were off stage, I ran back to stage because it's getting close for me to you know, get my time. So I had to go backstage again, get my tan touched up, started to uh, carve up a little bit more because I knew my time was coming, salt a little bit more, was starting to sip on some pre-workout and get ready. Uh, and it was game time for me. And um, it was awesome. Like I, I got to talk to so many guys backstage about their, their training protocols, their peaking protocols, their prep protocols, um, help them get, you know, understand some of the things they did and why I did it, understand some of the things they did and why they did it, and talk about the pros and cons of all of it. So literally, I spent most of my time just, you know, BS and backstage. Um, and it's the most relaxed and calm I've ever felt in my entire life before going out. Um, and then we were, you know, pumping up, and <laughs> the judges needed a pee break, and it kind of like screwed with me a little bit because I was like, I was ready to go. I was amped. So I'm like, no, I'm like, you know, I'm timing everything just perfectly. No, don't do this to me. But thankfully they were able to get back real quick and uh, the show ran smoothly, uh, hit stage. And I was perfectly, because we were lined up in numerical order, uh, I happened to land dead center in, 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 in the lineup. So there was eight of us um, total, eight total bodybuilders for that class. And it was pretty solid. Like a lot of guys came in condition, different sizes, different shapes. Uh, I had no idea where I was going to place, but the minute we hit stage, I just hit every pose to the fullest of my ability. Enjoyed it. Tried to remind myself to smile, even though I still didn't. I have a terrible <laughs> habit of just going into uh, game face. So a lot of my pictures, I have like this dead serious look on my face, and that was some of the, the judges' feedback of like. Were you really enjoying yourself? I'm like, yeah, I was having a great time. Like, why don't you smile? I'm like, because I'm just so in the zone of what I'm doing. It's like, I just have ice water in my veins and I'm just focused on hitting my pose. Like, I'm not focused on smiling. Um, I had a lot of support there. A couple of my clients came in. My wife was there. Um, I, there were some members from my organization, a and with clients there who were sitting in the audience cheering me on. So it felt really cool. Um, with everything I had going on to hit that show the way I did, it was just great. We were up there for a while. We went down to showing off hamstrings and calves and having to hit some back poses, but switching which leg that we spiked the calf on, uh, which kind of threw me for a loop because I always loved to put my right leg back. I was forced to put my left leg back. Not that it matters, but when you're used to posing a certain way, and, and this is something I have to practice on, is being able to hit every pose using either leg. Um, which thank you to the judges for challenging me because you know you you always go to your more comfortable side until you're forced not to. Um, so it was it was just a great experience, great show, well run, smooth, um, run efficiently. I think we started at 9:30 in the morning. We were done by like four, something like that, and they had like 70, 80 competitors. It, it, it moved very quickly. So thank you to Joe Franco for that. Um, and then we went off stage and just chilled. Um, until the intermission was done. I had no idea where I placed. I mean, I was dead center the entire time and a couple people got rotated, but just because you're dead center doesn't mean you won. Um, there was two other guys at least that I thought it was, it, it was close between the three of us. Um, you know, I just, and I didn't even realize who was around me until after the pictures. I mean, I heard numbers being changed, but I wasn't even focused on it at all. I was just focused on doing what I needed to do. 
um, chilled backstage for like you know 40 minutes or so till they were calling out the uh, till they called us back out for routines and awards. I chose not to do a routine this time because it's not scored. And for me, I just felt like I had done what I needed to do. I've had my stage time in previous shows doing the routine. Um, so I was literally just waiting backstage to find out how I placed. Um, so I literally sat, sat backstage, chatted with a bunch of people. Um, it was like, I met so many cool dudes, so many, that I'm still talking with on Instagram that are local, some who are not, one of which um, won his OCB Pro Card a couple weeks later, so congrats to him. And I told him, like, you, you have it, you just gotta get a little tighter. Um, and then we got ready for uh, awards. So, you know, out of eight guys, I think they only called out the top four or five. Um, and it went down one by one, and fortunately, I won the belt, um, which meant the world to me. Not because I won. It wasn't because I won. Um, I'm glad that, I, I, don't get me wrong, I mean, that's the whole point, is you want to come back better and you want to win. Uh, but I just brought a package that I couldn't have been more satisfied with. For once in my contest prep, I had no injuries. Uh, I mean, I had some nagging inflammation, but I really had no injuries like I had in previous preps where... Um, I wasn't able to, you know, squat and deadlift the way I wanted to in 2014 prep because of the back injury, glute, you know, the, the lower back glute strain that I had for months. I was able to, you know, keep the size on my legs. I was able to squat through most of it, uh, deadlift out throughout most of it, um, train the way I wanted to train throughout most of it, even though my energy level started to dip towards the end. I held a ton of mass, ton of size. Um, I actually think I came in bigger and fuller at 166 than I did at 168. Don't ask me how, but I did. I came in leaner. Um, I, I just, I was so satisfied with, for, for once, it was everything I felt like came in the way it needed to. Um, I, my physique was just more complete than it ever had been. I felt like I hit my poses better than I ever had hit them. Everything just went right that day. That day, everything, it felt better than the May show. Everything just went right that day. My my emotions were right. My my physical well-being was right. Everything was just, the stars were just aligned that day. For me, no matter what the result was, I just felt good. Um, and I'm happy now. Like, there's some of you out there who have hated on me, saying I'm not a legit natural pro because I never competed in the OCB or some of these larger organizations. Not that I give a crap. Um, what any of you think, but to prove a point, I went to where, you know, there's some pretty high competition and held my own again and proved once again that I am a natural pro bodybuilder. I don't care what alphabet soup you put in front of it. I don't care how long the organization's been around. I don't care what how better of a quality competition you think there might be in one organization over another. I have held my own against amateurs and pros from a lot of different organizations and have done well every time. Now, do I think that I'm elite? No. Do I think there are shows that if I go to, I'll be lucky to place in the top 10? Absolutely. I still have work to do, a lot of work to do. Um, I look at the pictures, I'm happy with what I saw. However, I could see already and things that I'm making for the off season uh, that I want to increase my upper body thickness overall, even though my shoulders, arms, and chest have always been a highlight of mine, uh, a strong point of mine. I have figured out ways and things that I want to do to thicken them up, add more striation, add more uh, density. Uh, my back, I have made major improvements in the overall composition of my back in terms of bringing out the, some of the details that I didn't have starting from 2012 to now. But overall, I want to increase my back thickness. My legs, I am, they're night and day from where they started. Uh, my quad development is, was a concern of mine. They're no longer a concern of mine. However, I want them bigger. I want them fuller. And I still have yet to get that true feathering in my quads. That is still a goal of mine. My hamstrings and my glutes were way tighter, way more defined. My glutes are more developed than they've ever been. But once again, another thing that I'm not satisfied with, though happy with, that I plan on bringing up. Um, when, if and when, I, I, you know, people are already asking me, like, uh, when are you coming back? I don't know. I don't know if I'm ever gonna do it again. Uh, I didn't know if I was ever gonna do it again after 2014. 
And the reason for that is this takes a physical and mental toll on your mind and your body. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, like it's not a joke. Yeah, it's cool to look shredded, but it is rough. It is mentally rough. Um, and I had a lot of things going on. Like I said, I had a physical issue going on that kind of concerned me. Um, thankfully, you know, like I said, in the end, all of it came out okay. Um, I don't know if I want to talk, I don't know if I want to reveal that series on camera yet. It's something I'm deciding. But, you know, I have other things that I need to focus on right now that are of higher priority. Uh, balancing family, work, training clients, uh, and everything else that I'm doing and adding a contest prep in is a lot of stress. It's a lot of learning how to adapt, be flexible, balance everything without anything suffering. And that's very hard to do, guys. I don't think you, guys and girls, I don't think you understand what this takes. And also, and I want to be completely honest about bodybuilding, once you're done with stage, dieting down is actually the easy part. Everybody thinks that that's the hard part. It's now the reverse that becomes extremely, extremely difficult uh, because you're used to being shredded now. And I actually wrote a post about this on Instagram and on my Facebook. The hard part now is allowing myself to up my calories, reverse diet properly. I don't want to slap on a ton of body fat because I work so hard that I don't, that there's no need for me to go slap on 10 or 15 pounds in, in a week. So this is actually, I'm actually eight weeks post show at this point. That's how delayed this video is. Uh, and I went from 166 stage day and now I'm hanging around like 174, 175. So in a little over two months, I've added about eight pounds of body weight back on. I wouldn't even guesstimate as to whether that's lean muscle and what's body fat, but it's been nice and slow. Uh, my carbohydrates are hanging around 210, 220. And on Saturdays, I'm just kind of doing a whatever day. Um, it's not a cheat. It's not anything like that. Um, it's just Saturday, I want to go out with my family and enjoy whatever food I want to, I want to enjoy. I'm not tracking it, period. So that includes pizza, if that includes ice cream, whatever it includes, I'm not tracking it. Sushi, whatever. It's not a reward meal, it's not a cheat meal, it's not a nothing. It's just, I'm not tracking it. And then Sunday through Friday, I'm dead on point with my diet. Um, there's no cardio, that's done, cardio is out, just so everybody knows. So I've reduced my physical activity and I've increased my calories and I've only gained eight pounds in a little over two months. So I think that's pretty steady. Um, and my goal is probably by the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, to be around 180 pounds. So that'd be a 14 pound gain, very nice and slow, um, and then kind of go from there. And I just want to say that, honestly, all of this has been worth it for me uh, because, as you know, if you've ever watched some of my old videos, I was very famous for telling myself what I could or couldn't do. Uh, I held myself back a lot and committing to these preps and getting them done and getting the result out of them that I've gotten has motivated me beyond belief just in, not even just in bodybuilding, in my personal life to do things and try things and put myself out on a limb more than I've ever put myself out before um, and commit to processes that I would have never committed to before because I know in the end they'll work as long as I stay the course. So in the end now guys, to summarize, and I know it's been you know about 19 minutes of rambling, I am an OCB pro, I am an ANBF pro, I am a DFAC pro, I am a USBF pro, and what that means is this. I am a natural pro bodybuilder, period, end of statement. I have nothing to prove to any org, org head, troll, nothing. I do this and I've done this from day one for me. This has been my journey. I support anybody else who wants to do it if they do it right. I don't want them to starve themselves. I don't want them to develop eating disorders, body dysmorphia, or any other bad habits. I want people to do this for them. I want them to enjoy the process. I want them to do it the right way. And there's a lot of ways to do it, okay? I'm not saying my way is the only way. There's a lot of, the, lot of ways to do this the right way. And this has become a major passion of mine. 
in terms of now diving in depth to training books, podcasts, everything that I can get my hands on in terms of listening to debates about supplementation and different types of supplements and the pros and cons and the science on all of them. And I'm just glad that I found it. I'm glad that I decided to embark on this journey, continue on this journey, because it has had such a positive, and I mean absolute positive impact on my life. And being able to be a positive impact on other people's lives that I don't think you can possibly grasp how grateful I am that I get to wake up and do this and enjoy it and influence other people in a positive way um, and get to meet so many other great men and women from all different age groups, walks of life. Um, you know, it's just, it's awesome. It, it, it's been so great and I can't say anything more about that and I hope if you've watched me, if you continue watching me, that I've given you some sort of inspiration, motivation, food for thought, um, whatever, just anything positive. I hope you grasp that. I thank anyone who has supported me because I don't think you understand how much I appreciate it. Um, from those of you who have been in the fitness industry, um, who have no reason to compliment me, have no reason to reach out, who have far busier schedules, you don't have to say anything to me. So the fact that you have, that I said that I've inspired you or anything else, that's awesome. Even if it's lip service, there was no reason for you to even do it, so I'll take it. Um, for all the competitors that I talk to back and forth, you know, if you ever need anything, you ever wanna train, by all means, man, girl, whoever, like, I'm game, I'm game, like, I love it, I love it. Um, it's just cool. It's just been so, so cool, guys. So I hope you appreciated the whole Secret Prep series. I hope you you know, you know, appreciate the whole um, series regarding this other prep that I decided to kind of do at the last second. Um, I can't thank enough, and I know I'm a prep coach, and listen, I don't mind. Andrew Pardew, my man, thank you. Um, we couldn't have done it any better. I, I, don't, I don't think. I mean, besides me being, you know, I don't know, sub 1% body fat. I don't think we could have done it any better. Everything ran smooth. You pushed me to do some things that I was uncomfortable doing in terms of my carbohydrate loading, and it, it just worked. Everything worked, everything clicked. It was a great team effort on you and I to talk about what we were seeing, what we were thinking, and, and just one hell of a game plan. I almost wish like I had started prep later and we could have done the Yorton this year because I would have qualified. Uh, I'm not even saying I would have placed in the top 10 at that show, but I think it would have been a hell of an experience to do. Uh, but that might be a goal in the future, aiming for the Yorton, just to do it. I, I don't even care where I place, just to qualify and do it. I think it would be just, that's like the, that's like the Natty Super Bowl right there. Um, you know, that that in my head is in, the, is in the back of my head right now to do that. So, uh, Andrew, can't thank you enough. If, if you don't want to work with me as a prep coach, highly, highly, highly recommend Andrew. Smart dude, good dude, cares about his clients, just awesome. Um, to all my friends and family, to my clients, everybody who supported me out throughout who came to the shows, thank you. I can't, I can't say it enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It meant the world to have you guys in the audience cheering me on to, to, to see me win. You know, once again, thank you to my wife and son. I know it wasn't easy. I know I was tired a lot of times. Danny boy, I hope you get to see this one day. I, I really do. I really do. Not that I care if he ever lifts a weight. I want him to understand how hard his father works and how hard his father cares. Sorry. And uh, I hope that somehow, some way, I've made you proud. And I hope that I instill a passion in you to pursue your passion, whatever it is. Whatever it is, just find a passion, kid, and stick with it. And don't let anybody, including me, discourage you from it, ever. Love life. Be passionate. Find your fire and pursue it without, without any restriction. All right, guys. Love you all. Talk to you later.